Welcome everybody to my presentation, um, how to use Drupal as an editorial system for online and for print. Um, I am Leif Henning. I work as a software developer at PPI Media for about three years. Um, some facts to PPI. Uh, PPI Media is a software company that produces uh, software solutions for the print production for about uh, 35 years. Yeah, and let's start. Um, in our project, we had some challenges we were facing. And yeah, these challenges were uh, when using Drupal for online and for print. Um, and first, yeah, um, the problem was that separate post variants should be possible for online and for print. Um, that you can just make an online article and that you can um, create a print variant out of this online article and that you don't yeah, just have to copy and paste all the content. Um, the next point was that we want print specific article modifications with Drupal so that um, if you just making one online article um, and if you are making a print variant out of it, that you don't, yeah, if you change some content for the print variant, that the online article won't be affected. And so we also had some um, things uh, during the connection from Drupal to InDesign. Um, for print, InDesign is very popular and you need to use it. And so um, it should be possible to, yeah, make content in both systems and that you can also um, update the content in both systems. Um, and you should also um, auto layout the article in Drupal. So if you are um, making an online article, um, making your print variant and you're making some formats, style formats, um, you don't want to do it in both systems for sure. You want, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the formats to be also be affected in InDesign. And for our customers who also already had a Drupal system with a specific content type for all the um, online articles, we also want to make it easy to integrate um, our solution into their existing Drupal system. So, um, you will all know that um, Drupal is very good for all the text, images, videos, and so on, that you can just publish all the content into the digital channels. <laughs> and yeah, it's very handsome and easy. And now we've looked um, into the uh, possible solutions which were on the market. And yeah, we found some solutions, but they were all uh, unidirectional so that you can um, yeah, just um, take the content from Drupal, um, move it to InDesign, sometimes also with copy-paste, um, which is very unuseful. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you are making some changes in your Drupal system or in your InDesign for the content, it won't be updated. So we want to have some solution uh, where, where you can make changes at both systems. So if you're making one article in Drupal um, and you will want to use it for InDesign, um, you will also be able to make changes in InDesign for the content. So we're using the JSON API from Drupal and we want to have a bidirectional connection. So updates are possible in both systems. And our solution is called Starlink. Uh, you can easily make magazines, e-papers, brochures, white papers, and so on with it. Um, yeah. Let's go on. Um, our solution, uh, we had some specific steps we are facing. And the first step was to introduce a new content type for print. Um, so, like I've already said, um, many companies already have their content type for online, and we want to make it very easy to, yeah, that they can also make the print content type out of the online content type. 
So um, we, s we said that the um, online content type and the print content type uh, would be basically, most fields would be the same. And for all the other stuff, um, we have a mapping introduced. I will explain it later what the mapping is good for and uh, yeah. And with this mapping, you can just say that the uh, machine names can also be differently and that all the fields for print and online can also be very differ differently. So I've done some demos, that's the first one. Um, yeah, here the Drupalcon, um, it's our content type, it's the online content type. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Um, it's very easy, so um, we've just doing um, very easy um, content types here. So the body is text formatted here, our headline field, it's also text formatted and um, yeah, first of all we are saying that we will just create the print content type here of the um, online content type and that we are just making the new print content type with all the specific fields for online and later on we can also remove all the fields we are not using which were not necessary. Here for our picture, um, it's a uh, content reference to the media type image. Yep. And yeah, that's basically the whole online content type. Like I've said, it's very easy uh, content type here. So, and if we want to create the print content type, we have some uh, configuration here um, for our PPI Starlink integration, it's called. So you can select which uh, content type you have for online and just select this checkbox, create print content type out of selected online type. And it basically says what it's doing. <laughs> and you can just save it. And then we should see that here uh, we will have a new content type for print. So we're having both. Um, both content times types are changed a bit we will see. So also the online content type, uh, we've added a new field belongs to, that's an entity reference and I will explain later what it's good for, why we need this and yeah, let's have a look at the new created print content type. So um, yeah, basically it of course has all the fields um, like the online content type, um, but it also has the article template ID. I will also explain later what it's good for, and we need it for the print integration, but only for the print one. And um, all the other fields um, should basically, for start, um, also be the same. So if we don't need any field, we can later on remove it, and for sure we can also have some really more complex uh, content types for online and it will also work. Here you see the pictures also an entity reference and we also have tags here but tags are not important for print so we can basically delete it. So um, yeah we can also delete the lead. Uh, we don't need a lead for print uh, but we have something else what is similar and basically the same uh, we could also rename it, but um, to, to make it a bit more clear, it's better to just create a new one. So we create a text formatted for um, our subheadline. And the subheadline, uh, we want to map the lead to the subheadline. The lead is yeah, basically the same for uh, online. So um, just save it and yeah. I've already created another content type to um, make a bit more clear what we are all, uh, what we can all do. Um, it's called Infobox. It's very easy, and yeah, for print we can also have some Infobox to show you later uh, that we can also place this Infobox as a content reference um, in InDesign easily. So um, it's 
a content reference, like I've said, uh, to a content type called Infobox. And yeah, that's basically our whole uh, print content type. So let's come to our mapping. Um, yeah, we have something else here in our uh, PPR styling configuration. Um, this mapping is necessary if we want to say uh, we want to map this um, type from online to this type from print, from our print article. And yeah, the machine names can basically um, be totally different, but the types should have to match. So here the body will be mapped to the body also. Um, if we have a field, if we have the online article with the field body, um, we will take all the content and we will map it to um, the field body in our print article. And here, like I said, we'll map the uh, field lead to field subhead line. And for the text, um, I've just selected none. So that means that uh, we will just ignore the text for print. So if we are having an um, online article, uh, create a print variant out of it, and the text will just be ignored. So um, that's basically all for our mapping first. Um, I think it will be a bit more clearer with an example. So um, we'll see it in the next step. Uh, the next step is use an online article as source for a print variant. Um, so we are basically having one online article um, with all, all the fields already filled and we want to create a print variant or even more print variants out of it. Um, this should also be possible with our solution but without just copy paste all the stuff because you can have very many fields and it would be yeah, a bit tricky to copy paste all the stuff. Um, yeah, but we also want to copy um, all the content but without copy pasting. So, and we also want to enable the user to switch between the online and print variant um, of the article. Um, and it's easily because we are um, holding together all the different variants from one article. Um, and it should be possible to create even more than the two connected variants. So you can have one online article, you can have two print variants, or you can even have more or even more online uh, variants. It should be all possible. So I have another demo. Um, I hope it's already, no. Uh, sorry. It's not playing yet. Uh, why it's not working? Ah, no, sorry. Um, here we have our DrupalCon 2022. It's our online article. You see it here for the content type, DrupalCon. And we will just have a look at it and edit it. So. Um, here you see we've already uh, pre-filled all the different fields. Uh, DrupalCon 2022 for the title. Here's some headline. Um, we have some lead, which should be um, mapped to our subheadline for print. Um, we also have some body text. And the body text is also with some style formats. Um, like you see here, some text is bold. And... Yeah, there were some other um, styles, but you will see later. Um, and we have some image. Um, and the image is also with some caption and so on. And here are some text, which should be, like I've said, ignored for print. So um, on the right side here, we have some styling integration sidebar. And um, we have a section for all our variants. And you see here um, that says online DrupalCon 2022. There, 
is a list normally with all the different variants, but for now we only having one. And you can also uh, create another variant out of the current article. And you can select if it should be an online article or an online variant or a print one. So we will create a print variant. And you see here um, in the URL that we will have a different um, ID. So it's a totally different article. So in the title you see, uh, you also have this print we always edit in the title. And the headline is also the same for sure. And here the subheadline, um, it's the same content like we've already had it for our lead. So it's all working with our mapping. Um, we also have our body um, with all the format styles. And the picture should also be the same for sure with all the different um, fields here. And we have the newly introduced um, info box for print. And I've just created some um, content for this. It's just a content reference. So uh, we will see, uh, we will say that we want to um, take the info box, see you next year. So uh, we have a title for sure. And we have a info box headline and the info box body. And this will be later interesting for our InDesign integration uh, because we can also handle all this stuff with content references and so on. So um, now we um, see here we have a new group. And this group uh, was our DrupalCon 2022 article and our DrupalCon 2022 print article. We are referencing with our field belongs to um, to this same group. So um, all the different variants are belonging together. So that we can say um, we can also go from one variant um, to another variant of our article. So here in our variant section, we now see we have one for print, one for online. And let's just say we will create of our print article another one, another print article. Um, the ID in our URL will also change because it's a totally different article. And we will add the uh, prefix here, or postfix. Uh, we have the same subheadline. And basically, yeah, the fields should be all the same for sure. Um, yeah, like I've said, um, these are basically two different um, articles. So if we are making some changes in one of them, um, the, yeah, the other article shouldn't be affected. So we are having two print variants. If we are making some changes here uh, for the newly created print variant, the other one shouldn't be affected. Um, yeah, here you see we also have all the same content. And yeah, let's make some changes here. Um, I've added here in the headline with some changes as a text. And yeah, then we can save the article and we will see um, how we can easily switch between the variants and that they uh, won't be the same for the content. Here, yeah, it's it's with some changes here. And um, like I said, here we see all the different variants and you can just click on the other variant to switch between them. Now we are on the um, first print variant and it's without these changes. So let's go on to the most interesting part to our InDesign and Drupal connection. Um, what was our plan? Uh, we want to place Drupal articles in InDesign without the copy-paste way because it's not so handy. Uh, we want to have an automatic layout of the article. So um, if you want to um, make some changes in your Drupal article, you're making some um, styles like bold and so on, you don't want to make the changes in both systems. And like I've said, um, we want to mod modify the content in both systems. It should be possible and you can synchronize the content. So if you're making one change, um, 
yeah, you can write it back into the other system. So that's the bidirectional connection, sorry. Um, and we want to make maximum support for the editor so that he can very easily create his content and that um, he also sees a preview um, of the print article, how it would look like, and some overset. I will explain later what an overset is. You will maybe don't know what an overset is for online, but for print it's important. So let's start with the bidirectional content editing. Um, here we have our three um, different variants. One is our um, online variant, and these are our print variants. And now let's switch to InDesign. Here I've already um, made some document template. And you see um, in InDesign our uh, content search. You can search for content from Drupal here in InDesign. And you can filter for a specific title. So we are searching for all the content with a title which contains the word DrupalCon. And we are seeing all our three different variants. So but it's a bit more cool. Um, you can also see all the content of the different fields. That's the uh, body text. You also see what you've already written into your Drupal system into the body text. Um, this should be placed here into this um, InDesign field. Um, it's yeah, the main content. Um, and we have some other fields. You can, um, you can just drag and drop every single field into the article um, it sometimes makes sense, but you can also drag and drop the whole article to your InDesign document, so all the fields will be mapped into the specific fields um, from InDesign. So here, for example, we have our picture um, with our caption and with the original um, image. The caption should be placed here. Um, yeah, and the image here. And we also have the info box. It's also very interesting because um, it's a content reference and we can also um, just say that we are placing these different um, these different Drupal fields into specific uh, InDesign field boxes. So these should be placed into these in info box. So, and let's have a look how it works. Uh, we can drag the whole article and place it here. And you will see it will take some time, but all the different fields will be, yeah, just placed into the specific InDesign fields. And also all the formats, like you maybe see here, uh, will also be mapped. So, here you see some bold text and some different uh, InDesign formats. So let's make some changes here in InDesign. We'll remove some text and we can replace here this DrupalCon um, with, I've written uh, Drupal member also. Um, and then you see that there are changes here and you can write all these changes back to the Drupal article. So um, here you see that there are changes and we have here this little icon. Um, if you click it, you can write all the content back to your um, Drupal article. So it takes also some time. And yeah, you will see we can directly jump from InDesign to our Drupal article. And all the changes should be affected here. So in the subheadline, you see uh, we had this 2022. Um, and I've removed it in InDesign, so it also won't be here in Drupal anymore. And we've done some changes for our body text, and these changes will also be take place here. So let's also make some changes in Drupal, and let's have a look how it will look um, in InDesign. Yeah, we, we will remove this print, we don't need it, and we will make some changes. Let's remove the Drupal member here. And yeah, just save the article and yeah, 
let's switch back to InDesign. So back in InDesign, you see that there are changes. Uh, you can also search for specific changes here and you can uh, synchronize it with this button. And yeah, if you synchronize it, um, you see all the changes were made here also in InDesign. The 2022 was removed. And you see for the title that the print was also removed here. So that's the first step for our um, InDesign and Drupal connection. And let's have a look at some other features for this. Yeah, we also have some support for the editor. Um, one of this is the overset indication. And yeah, you will maybe don't know what an overset is, but in print you have a limited um, amount of space what you can write just. And all the text should fit in these specific boxes. And if the text won't fit in, uh, you will see that there is some overset that you have to shorten the text a bit or that you yeah, just remove something um, that the text will fit in uh, again. So let's have a look. I hope, yeah, works. So I've added some text here for our body text. Um, yeah, and you can just see the overset here also in InDesign later on when we have some. Um, yeah, now you see it. Um, the background of the specific field is colored red. And you will see the last word which should fit in is show. So um, all the overset indication in InDesign is also done with um, InDesign plugins, but it, yeah. So let's switch back to Drupal. And we should also see the same overset indication here. And yeah, as you see it here, after the word show, there is an overset indicator. Uh, you, yeah, you will see it. And if we remove some text, the overset indicator will disappear. And if you write some text again, it yeah, takes some time sometimes, but the overset indicator um, will be placed again. That's basically one of our new features. And we have some other features to support the editor. Uh, we want to have the auto layout that we don't have to do layout changes in both systems. And we want to have an article preview already shown in Drupal so that you can see how the article will look like when you place it on the specific, uh, the specific InDesign document. Oh, yeah. So it's our print article. Um, and here in our Starlink integration sidebar, um, you see some more points. Um, one of it is the content usage. Um, you see some metadata and some information, um, which is interesting how the article status is and if you've already placed it. And um, it's interesting if you want to uh, publish a whole publication. Yeah, here you see it's placed on page one, and this is our planner. It's one of our tools where you can see the whole publication. And you will see all the metadata here, like edition and our pub date, uh, when it should be published, and that it's placed on the first page here, and that we are already editing it. Um, we have some more information here under the preview. And you will see um, we will get a whole preview from our InDesign document, how it would look like if you just publish it. And you will also see here um, all the different uh, styles, layout formats will also be, yeah, be affected in InDesign. Here we have some bold text and you should also see it's not so clear, but I hope you will see it. It's also bold here in InDesign. And this text is in um, our body text, a heading three, and we will also map it to uh, InDesign style, um, 
which yeah you hopefully see here that it's a bit um yeah other formatted so that's the whole indesign thing and let's go to our last point um, I've already said that we can search for all the content um, in InDesign from our uh, to that we can search for um, all the Drupal content for all the Drupal articles in InDesign, and now I'll, I will explain um, how we've realized it. Um, so we want to have the ability to search for the Drupal content in InDesign, and it should be possible to uh, configure all these different searches in Drupal directly so that we can say um, what we want to search for explicitly. And it should be possible um, to filter the Drupal content because we don't want to see all of these print articles, for example. Um, we also want to yeah, just see some specific articles with a specific title or so on. So. Um, next demo. Um, here you've already seen that we can search for it said articles here. Um, we've realized it with Drupal views. So we have a view what we are searching for and this view is called articles. And so we can say we want to filter all these articles for the word DrupalCon. And here you see in our Drupal views that we have one view named articles. Um, I've just created an example that we can also search for all the print articles, which will be interesting for our content editors. And we will have to make it in rec REST export with a specific um, subpath. So we are all searching for um, all, the, um, all the views with a REST export, but we are also filtering it for the specific subpath. So uh, we want to make the format JSON so that we are getting all the results as a JSON response. And we want to uh, do some filter criteria. We want to search for a specific title. So let's add um, a title criteria, filter criteria. And yeah, we want to say uh, we want to search for all um, print articles which contains a specific word. So we will use the operator contains. And yeah, the next filter criteria will be um, to use the specific content type because we only want to have all the print content types here. Um, so we will say, let's search for content type. And it takes some time. <laughs> um, yeah, let's say we want to have all the content types, which is one of, and we can say explicitly, it's um, the Drupal print content type. Because we've said um, in our configuration that this is our specific one for print. So um, if we want to have the ability to search for um, all the content in this new view, um, we will have to restart um, InDesign for a short moment, uh, sorry. Uh, we've also uh, selected that we will display all items and we don't want pagination. So now if we want to have all these views um, available in InDesign, we have to restart the InDesign client and yeah, just start it again. And uh, take some time, sorry. So, and now it should be possible to see here not only our articles, um, we should also see yeah, yeah, our print articles. And the difference is now um, if we search for the word DrupalCon as a filter criteria, we'll get both of these articles, uh, which has the, the prefix print. And if we search for all articles, we will get all with content type uh, DrupalCon and DrupalCon print. So that's basically all. These are the group contributions. And thank you very much. <laughs> so
So, are there any questions? Um, is there any, is is it too far-fetched a dream to turn this into something that someone could use to, without having to open InDesign, to just manage, say, an annual report on Drupal, hit a button, see a PDF preview, and it, it sort of does it all for them uh, that way? Or is that, it seems like you've done an amazing job syncing the two applications Thank together. You. I've, I've looked at things like InCopy and all sorts of stuff to do like weird things like this, but this seems really good. But is there a, yeah, can, could you make a, a multi-page, multi-content thing that we make the InDesign templates, sync up the fields, come back with errors if text is too long and that sort of stuff, and generate a report or something to a template? Could you use that to, to do this with, with a bit of work? Um, I would say it would be very difficult because we need our InDesign server for sure for yeah. all this stuff. Uh, because we also get the preview, uh, like we've seen, um, from our InDesign server. So yeah, I think... Um, you could run one of those, but it would be quite difficult to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, uh, two questions. Um, yep. Question number one, which APIs do you use on the InDesign side? And uh, question number two, how much of this is open source? Thank you. Um, we are using... Uh, Question two, sorry. Um, which of these are open source? For now, it's all experimental. Um, so we've just said um, that we will push it into the store. We are now really finished. And we want to, um, yeah, for sure, make all the stuff with our variant concept also possible that everyone can use it. But for some other stuff, it's important to also use an InDesign server. So um, you need the InDesign server for the whole ecosystem. Not yet. Uh, which InDesign API? Could, could you repeat the question oh. before the end? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, the first question is, so how much of this is available on Drupal.org or will be available on Drupal.org? And second question, like which specific InDesign API would you use? Yeah. Um, for the first question, um, like I've said, um, we will push it into Drupal.org, all of it. But for the previous stuff, um, you will have to need a InDesign server. So you don't get the previews if you don't have the InDesign server. And uh, InDesign plugins, are they open source as well? Um, I don't think so. Okay, no. Some more questions or? Um, what do I have to do to, to prepare the, uh, the InDesign template for like filling in the, the content stuff? Um, you uh, basically don't have to do so much um, for all the normal text fields and the picture. Um, for all the text field, you will get all the InDesign fields because we are all loading these fields over the JSON API, Drupal JSON API. And for some other more dif difficult fields, uh, you will have to configure some stuff. I've not shown it yet, uh, because for some content reference and, and so on, uh, yeah, you just have to configure some stuff, how, um, how the referencing field name is. And then we are getting all the different um, fields into um, this content reference. Okay, so may I add a word like? Yep. So in, in, sure. in design, you have to tag the uh, InDesign frames. So each tag has to have a tag because so this is a headline, this is a headline field, subheadline field, body text field, and these tags will be used to map it to the Drupal fields to flow the content in. No, this part is uh, outside Drupal. Yeah. Okay. Are there more? Oh. Thank you. Uh, just following up on his question, because I think I probably missed the API, because I know he did ask what API, and you said um, you know you need an InDesign, in InDesign server. But in addition to, to that, do you need something else or it's all custom build? 
Um, we also have some background tasks, but otherwise um, you basically don't only need uh, the InDesign server. Just uh, maybe a last question, not last question, but if, if, if I'm doing content moderation and I do a, uh, and you have revisions of one of, the pr of one of the articles, if I revert back to a previous version of that, uh, does it take effect across all the, the items that are in that bundle or will it only be for that specific uh, item that have reverted back? Um, if you are making a older revision, um, if you take the revision back, um, it should also take this revision because we are ma you are making changes for the article. Um, with that uh, setting, that, that layout that you showed with InDesign, is that the default layout or how complex can you make it? Like if the I change InDesign layout? Yeah, it, can you make it more complex and then it will match yep. onto the website? So then technically, do you have a sort of a UX design? Uh, we have some uh, basically predefined mm. templates in InDesign. Oh, so okay. you can take all these predefined um, templates from InDesign. And can you not, you can't create your own? You can oh, you also can. create your own. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you can also change the current one you're using, save it, and just use it next time. And that will automatically update onto the Drupal website? Um, if you're having these fields, for sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Are there more questions? Okay, doesn't seem so. Thank you very much. Oh, and